meeting ask to stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public Peter and Jackson. So we have five people that have signed up, so two minutes. Tony Wiedenbacher. Well, is anyone else signed up? Aren't you going to talk about Shh, 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 Shh. first? No. Okay. No. Nope. All right. Um, I just feel that we should vote against having any, the town having any part in the 5G thing. And because it, one, increases radiation, which we do not need more of. We have enough toys and enough electronics. We don't have to keep upping it and upping it and go, we die, the bees die, everybody else dies. We do not need to be a guinea pig. It's been tested in Europe and they don't like it so much here. We let the people who are building it do all the testing so that we get a perfectly okay score no matter what. So I would like to very much recommend that Woodstock becomes 5G proof zone in which none of it comes in here. Thank you, Tony. Joanne Steele. Uh, okay. Hi. Uh, I'm the um, conservation chair for the Mid-Hudson and Sierra Club. Uh, I'm very concerned about 5G and about the electronics uh, uh, radio frequency uh, in general. Uh, I'm reading from something I took off uh, it was so much off the net. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Nicholas Hadaris, a leading neuropsychologist and addiction specialist, explains America's toxic denial syndrome. Quote, we now know that those iPads, smartphones, and Xboxes are a form of digital drug. Uh, recent brain imaging research is showing that they affect the brain's frontal cortex which controls executive, executive functioning, including impulse control, in exactly the same way that cocaine does. Um, the technology is so hyper-arousing that it raises dopamine levels, the feel-good transmitters are most involved in the addiction <coughs> dynamic, as much as sex. Bio Initiative Report 2014. Quote, uh, which is a report based on 1,800 published studies uh, prepared by 29 authors from 10 countries, uh, 10 holding medical degrees, 21 PhDs, and three uh, assorted. Um, the Bioinition Report 2014, quote, bio effects are clearly established and occur at very low levels of exposure to electromagnetic fields and radio frequency radiation. Bio effects can, control, can occur in the first few minutes at levels associated with cell and cordless phone use. That means always. Bio effects can also occur from just minutes of exposure to mobile phone cell towers, Wi-Fi and wireless utility smart meters that produce whole body exposure, chronic base station at cell tower exposures can result in illness. Joanne Tan. Thank you. Abby Mitchell. <coughs> Abby. Oh. Yes. Um, I have some information here about studies that I just want to give everyone. I have I have circled the uh, their website to go to. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going to read this. Uh, wireless damages your biological systems, neurological, cardiac, reproductive, blood-brain barrier. Don't believe the industry <coughs> propaganda that wireless is safe. Thousands of studies document harm from wireless devices, hence the, the, uh, the uh, 
connection here to get on the internet and find out about that. Children and pregnant women are the most vulnerable. Wire connections such, such as with Ethernet or fiber optics are the wise way to go as it is, is biologically safe, much faster and secure from hacks. We absolutely don't need 5G bringing with it even more radiation than we already have. Thank you. Thank you. Weston Blelock. So I'm against uh, 5G for all the above and health reasons and for the uh, impact it will have on the town aesthetics. We've been around this uh, rodeo a few times. Uh, last year uh, we spoke about, or I spoke to the board about uh, the New York State DEC uh, planning to strip away the uh, local siting uh, and fees from the town. This was turned back uh, by activists. Then this uh, summer, the governor had a special stipulation in the budget. That was turned back by uh, activists. And now the FCC has uh, engineered a special uh, order uh, superseding everybody and it's rush, it's fast tracking FCC uh, it's going to completely take away all uh, local law and authority and uh, the US uh, conference of mayors is uh, there are 306 uh, cities across this, uh, the country that are uh, now uh, suing the FCC mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that Woodstock will uh, check out uh, what's happening there, I'm and also to, with NICOM, which is the New York State uh, Mayors and uh, Municipal <coughs> Officers. Perhaps we can, uh, I also checked, there's a town, uh, the state of Delaware had an ordinance against uh, 5G happened, and they, uh, a law firm stepped up and did a class action, and various towns joined, and for a town of our size, if the uh, participation rate would have been two thousand dollars, mm -hmm. so that's one way of going. Or passing something called an urgency ordinance, which uh, a town in California passed, which is a ninety-nine page, very comprehensive way to uh, with stop clocks, and it's against it would protect all the siting and so on. The FCC may come after us, but there may be a way through uh, constitutional lawyers from Harvard to do a pro bono to help us uh, uh, face that fight. Question time. Okay, so I uh, have uh, represent 300 people on a petition. Thank you. And there were other people that have uh, petitions as well. This is a and this is a Delaware's why don't you give me the whole package? Oh, sure. Because okay. we've got one more speaker. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and, here's, and this is uh, the Martin Paul letter. Thank you. Pass it to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Romine. Greetings. Greetings. I'm Thank a flesh you. and blood living man. I am a beam of frequency. I am, and all of you, are electromagnetic biological systems that depend on intercellular signaling, which uses electromagnetic signals to function properly, as do all animals, birds, fish, and bees. The introduction of a multitude of wireless devices that produce and create artificial man-made electromagnetic fields pulsing 24-7 interferes with the electromagnetic with the with the electromagnetic web of life. I have a God-given right to live in the natural environment that was here for millions of years before wireless showed up. If someone wants to trade their natural birthright for an artificial man-made pulsing electromagnetic environment, they are free to do so. What they are not free to do is force me and my family to live in that environment so they can have all kinds of wireless gadgets such as 5G iPhones, driverless cars, and robots. Our natural environment is precious to life itself and belongs to no one and is not to be co-opted or supplanted 
with an alternative environment the rich technological despots think they can force on us through fraud in their unholy quest for filthy lucre. I demand this town protect all of us from this 5G assault. Stop listening to the FCC, the telecom industry, and the federal government. They're all bold-faced liars. I am demanding this town join in with hundreds of towns and cities nationwide opposing 5G and pass an ordinance prohibiting 5G transmitters. Stand on the U.S. Constitution, the supreme law of the land, all of our town officials swore to obey, uphold, and defend. We have a God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's time to start acting like it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. So we're going, to, we're going to move on now because we have a, a, another uh, presentation about uh, the uh, county charter. But I do want to say that this is a topic that the Supervisors uh, Association has been looking at for quite a while, uh, at different options, uh, if the SCC had moved forward um, on how we could um, deal with this, because none of us wants to give up our uh, home rule. So thank you all for coming out. We have this presentation, and then we have some public hearings. If we finish up early and people want to hang out, we might have time for a few more speakers. Um, but for now, Gary Bischoff. Okay, I'm Gary Bischoff. I'm a former county legislator. Recently, I was appointed to a commission that studied the Ulster County Charter, specifically that portion of the charter that deals with uh, redistricting, which happens after every 10-year census. What we did is we looked at the existing plan, we tightened it up, we improved it, uh, and we totally took it out of the hands of the legislature. And the independent redistricting panel, what they come up with, becomes the law of the land. The reason I'm bringing it before you is because it's on the ballot. You'll have a chance to weigh in this November. And very few people know about it, even know that it's on the ballot. So I want to urge you to turn over your ballot and, and vote yes on this proposition. It's a good government thing. I'll read to you exactly what is on the ballot and then try to explain it a little bit in layman's terms. It says, shall section C10 of the Ulster County Charter be amended to provide for creation of an independent redistricting commission designed to exclude political influence in revising county legislative districts as proposed and unanimously approved by the Ulster County Charter Commission. So what this basically saying is that as a voter you, you approve the, the work that we did in this Charter Commission. And I can assure you that there was 11 of us on this commission. We deliberated on almost every aspect of this. Ulster County has already had one redistricting by an independent panel. There were a couple of issues that came up we made some changes to avoid those issues. Ulster County is one of the few counties in the state that has an independent redistricting committee. You may say, well, so what? You know, who cares about the county legislature? But county legislators do influence state governments, and if enough legislators did this, maybe it would have an influence, a ripple-up effect, because, as you know, the state, New York State and many other states, as well as congressional districts are gerrymandered and made by the people in office. We totally avoided that and brought it into the hands of regular citizens like yourself. So I'd urge you to vote yes on this. Thank you. I, I have a question. So, so I think on the one hand you said vote yes for independent redistricting, yes. redistricting, but then I thought I heard you say that we already had independent redistricting. We had. Well, we, we did an independent redistricting after the 2010 census. Mm -hmm. During that process, there were a couple issues that came up. About One of them was about who gets appointed and how to get appointed mm -hmm. and how to get selected. Because the elected officials do want to influence it, so they want to get their people on there. The idea is to get independent people on there once they already let them do their things. And then there were some changes we made where last time the legislature was able to approve it, which means they can say no, and then you have to go back to the drawing boards. Okay. Then they can say no again, go back to the drawing so boards until they get what they want. Yeah. Now, the changes we made, the Independent Redistricting Committee does its work, and it becomes law. <coughs> Very 
forward-looking, uh, right out there in the front of a good government to do that and, and really stretch what independent panels can do. Okay. And will this be from now into eternity? Because I guess 2020 will have another census. Yes. So this would be helpful in 2020, but, it's, but it, it will go every 10, it'll be in the future as right. well. It will be every 10 years, unless, of course, you know, they appoint another panel and change the charter again. But it, it'll be for the foreseeable future, let's put it that way. Until there's a vote to change it. Gary, Which could happen. Can I, yeah. can Gary. I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Hold, hold on, just... Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, who, oh, who oversees this to make sure that it is not slanted one way or the other? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go over the process a little bit. It's hard to get an independent panel that's appointed by uh, elected officials. The oh. way we structured it is the minority and minority, majority and minority, each appoint two people to this panel. Those two people then select three more people. Mm -hmm. And if they can't agree on three more people, they're thrown out, and two and two or four people are appointed again. And they look at this pool of people. And by the way, a pool of people, you can't be a county employee, you can't have been elected official for so many years, you can't be a town employee, or a village employee, or a state employee. So the county executive gets this pool of people and then from that pool of people, minority and majority appoint two, and then they together appoint three. Then once that's done, they're independent of the legislature. Now, you can't be so naive as to think that the legislators are not going to whisper in their ears. Right. But the big change we made is that what they do becomes law. Okay. And also that the majority doesn't get the, the majority legislature picks don't get the bigger share, but right. it's, it's even. It's even. So it, it's, it sounds like, like, it, like, it's, it's, like it's not a bad deal. Right. It, we, <laughs> we worked very hard to get it independent and free of politics as we could. Hey, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be sponsoring you if it wasn't a good thing because you're a good man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Gary, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry about being uh, last minute. Oh, that's okay. We were able to fit it in. We're so. going to take off. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. I thank really you. appreciate Th it. Thank you, Gary. Right. Take care. Good job. I hope you pass the appointed time there, Jackie. Uh, yes. Good job. So if you could read the. At a town board meeting held on October 1st, 2018, the town board scheduled a public hearing for the 2019 budget, Town of Woodstock, Water District. All persons may now be heard. Don't rush. It's nice. I like water. We all like water. We like clean water. So the budget this year for the water district is two hundred and twenty-two thousand eight hundred and twenty-six dollars. Um, there's no property levy this year in the water district. So there's no capital improvements or debt. Um, the funds will be all raised by metered sales and metered charges. A uh, little bit of interest. One of the nice things, the last, it's good and bad. You, your uh, interest on loans is going up, but interest on savings accounts are going up too. So that's uh, increased a little bit. And uh, that's about it. The board have any questions? No. Nope. Nobody? You said uh, it's going to be paid for by meters? Yes, Meet, uh, usage and uh, metered sales and a meter charge. So we have a $17 per quarter meter charge. That's the base charge. And then... Uh, In other words, just the charge... And then and then it's 42 cents per 100 gallons. So, so in other words, you're just paying a little extra for... The use of the water, the, the product, basically, right? I don't follow you. Just the customer is just paying a little bit more for the. You mean because of the meter charge? Yeah. That's the meter charge has been present 
You're forever. Not gonna, you're for, not going to change the meters or anything. No, we're not changing the meters. We just charge. You know, per periodically you have to. to yeah, no, um, we, everything's going uh, up. Yeah, but um, and then the rest of it. So that the meter, the base charges is up. Fifty thousand two hundred and sixty-nine dollars, and then the uh, the usage is one hundred and fifty-eight thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. Tony, it isn't. It isn't that for the people who are who are you know poor guys. They have to pay for their water. Them of us who were not in the water district have to pay to keep the pumps going and have to pay and the to, to keep the whole thing going. And believe me, it, it, it costs more to have a, have a well dug and a pump and a, and a pump put in. So it's, you know, don't don't howl because you're getting burned. Uh, absolutely, you know, you pay you pay a base fee of sixty eight dollars a, a year for the meter for four quarters, and then it's forty two cents per hundred gallons. Yeah, it, I it, got my it, own well, but I'm telling you, it's a lot more expensive. Than and that. you probably don't get it much cheaper than that when you consider the electric and all the maintenance. When we so. lost the pump at the bottom and had to have the whole thing redone, trust me, it cost a couple of thousand. Yeah, and Woodstock's water. Mm -hmm rates very highly every year so any other questions board okay then where is the water district cost for the year 2019 or two hundred twenty two thousand eight hundred twenty six dollars and whereas there was a public hearing scheduled for october 16 2018 at 7 15 p.m in the town offices therefore be it resolved to close the public hearing and be it further resolved to raise water district operation maintenance costs in the following manner. $158,975 in metered sales, $50,269 per meter for meter charges, $5,500 in interest and penalties, $1,200 uh, from interest and earnings, uh, $6,882 appropriated fund balance, uh, and be a further resolve the base fee seventeen dollars base fee for each meter per each quarter reading and be a further resolve the user rate shall be forty two cents per hundred gallons and be a further resolve the user rate shall be effective beginning December first, two thousand eighteen. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. There's one budget down for the year. Yeah. <laughs> you ready for the second one? Is it? Uh, oh yeah, we're time. Okay, let's hear it. At a town board meeting held on October 1st, 2018, the town board scheduled public <clears throat> hearing for the 2019 on-site sewer district. All persons may now be heard. Anybody? Anybody here from Anybody. the on-site district? <laughs> Any questions from the board? No. No. None that we haven't discussed. No. Yeah. Okay. Public? Nothing? Okay then. Where's the properties that have on site systems pay for the operation and maintenance of the constructed systems? And whereas the public hearing was held on October 16, 2018 at 7 20 p.m. at the town offices on this plan and assessment roll. Therefore, be it resolved to close the public hearing and be it further resolved to apportion and assess Central and Eastern Wastewater District $52,050 for the year, $51,000. What do you have? That should be a one. $51,050? Yeah. Oh, $51,550? Yeah. In the following manner, uh, oh, excuse me, no, 52 okay. 50 uh, interest and earnings, $500, uh, 51550 special O&M assessment on those improved properties per Schedule B, which I think you all saw. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Five minutes, Bill. Got five minutes to. Yep. Okay, so. Um, you have the public hearing at 725. Oh, is it, it 725? It is oh, I yeah. thought it was 730. You are right. It's Laura. <laughs> is, it, is it 7? I got 723. It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, we ready? On the wall, so it's at a town board meeting held on October 1st, 2018, the town board <coughs> resolved to schedule a public hearing for the 2019 budget for the Hamlet Sewer District. All persons may now be heard. 
Anyone want to talk about that? Hamlet sewer? Anyone? Anyone? I'm waiting for the mini series. Are you? So last year I budgeted uh, for the reed beds, and um, that process has been slowed down with DEC permits. Um, and so we didn't use that, uh, we didn't expend that money. And I hope that we'll be constructing it this next year, but I didn't budget in it because we'll, we'll uh, borrow the money and then the following year start paying it back. So um, that's why it's not reflected in the budget this year. That's uh, the basic drop, right? Th that and um, there was a drop in the, uh, let me take this out. No, the the basic the big drop was uh, the bonds. the bonds. Oh right. Last year we paid seventy seven thousand dollars in bonds. We're we're debt we're, done. we're debt free. Yeah. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. Yes. Dear, dear. I know. Good. All our districts are debt free. Uh, all our yeah, this good stuff. Too bad the town board members aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm in good shape. <laughs> I'm not there because I've been charging everything to you. <laughs> so we are still um, we're working away on those reed beds, and like I said, uh, we hope to be working on that this year and actually get them constructed. Um, we're working on a nice grant to cover a good portion of the costs. And um, with that, if there are no questions, whereas the year 2019, the Helmet Sewer District has operational <coughs> maintenance costs totaling $279,051, and whereas a public hearing was held on October 16, 2018, at 7.25 p.m. at town offices, Therefore, be it resolved to close the public hearing and be it further resolved to finance the above cost for the Hamlet Sewer District in the following manner. $1,200 from interest on revenue, $5,000 from interest in penalties, $240,000 from metered sales, $29,886 per meter charge, $2,500 service to other funds, $465 appropriated fund balance, um, be further resolved, the $17 base fee for each meter for each quarterly reading, and be further resolved that the benefit assessment be no more than $15.83 per benefit unit, and be it further resolved that the user rate shall be $1.03 per 100 gallons, and be it further resolved the user rate shall be effective beginning December 1st, 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, be it resolved to adopt the preliminary 2019 budget and be it further resolved to schedule a public hearing on the preliminary 2019 budget for Thursday, November 8th at 7 p.m. at the town hall and be it further resolved to authorize the town clerk to post in the town's official newspaper a notice of such hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, uh, Mr. Supervisor. Oh, thank you. Well, congratulations to all of us. Um, whereas the town of Woodstock has acquired equipment for road shoulder work and use, this resolution came from highway, so that word is a little funny. And whereas the town of Sorgies and the town of Woodstock desire to share the cost and expense for their respective road work, and whereas the parties desire to enter into an intermunicipal agreement pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 119-0, therefore be it resolved, the Town of Woodstock and the Town of Sorbies mutually agree to the covenants, agreements, and conditions in the agreement, and be it further resolved that the Town Board authorizes the Supervisor, Town Clerk, and Highway Superintendent to enter into said agreement on behalf of the Town of Woodstock. Second. And Sorbies has uh, voted to sign this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Mike gets to share shoulder machine. Uh, that's it for the resolutions. No, we got all the... Uh, oh, oh my God, yeah. I forgot about those because they're Simple not spelled ones. out. Yeah, that's third quick ones. Be resolved to accept minutes for the meetings held in September 18th, October 1st, and October 9th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Jack, you had one comment. Okay, thanks, Laura. Yeah, you're welcome. Be it resolved to accept the town clerk's report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be resolved to authorize transfers per transfer sheet. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be resolved to authorize payment of audited vouchers in the amount of $227,295.26. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now you got them all. Uh, that's it. That's it. All right. Did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. So the other thing I had on here is, I, this has been in the purple folder for a while. The Como Stewardship Advisory Committee um, has a, a pro project proposal form, um, which they would like us to adopt. Um, the, the only issue that I have is that any projects always start in the supervisor's office with the safety um, and insurance committee. So uh, here they've got a little reversed. So I would just suggest that that, that be amended, that, that it would be the safety and insurance committee that would forward to the advisory committee. It's for you. <laughs> Is it ET, call hall? Um, so anyway, anybody have any thoughts, opinions, questions, answers? You know, if people want to hold events, now some of them would, wouldn't go to the. I was going to ask. Not all of them would go to the. And that's why that's why they would start at the. First off, I would mention that a member of the stewardship committee actually sits on the health, safety, and insurance committee. Um, anytime there's a mass gathering or a big event, um, they would come to the safety and insurance committee. Even small events, somebody wants to film a movie in town or somewhere. Um, the Peace March that we have up here. Now, that, that's a good example of what we wouldn't bother sending to the Como, the Stewardship Committee, because that's something they've already seen that they, you know, these are agreeable uh, type events, and it's just for the Insurance and Safety Committee to make sure that, you know, all the, the specific details are worked out. And most of it stays on the administrative Side of the fence. Right. right. And if I could just add, the Insurance and Safety Committee has earned a number of awards from our insurance company for doing exactly that, having a committee that oversees things before they actually happen. So knock on wood, wherever it is, we haven't had any. Actually, we, we have a, a representative for our, uh, uh, from NIMR, our insurance representative, who frequently will come and sit in at our meetings and give us advice. And when he can't make it, We'll, we'll frequently contact him and say, look, this is, this is what's going on, issue, no issue, big issue, little issue, and they'll get back to us with that. Mm -hmm. The Insurance and Safety Committee looks at projects all through town. The Stewardship Committee only deals with things up here on the Como. Can I ask you Where's a question about what happened on, on a main road through Tinker Street through the town with that road? It took forever to fix, and now it's impossible to drive on. I mean, you're talking about Mill Hill. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you you brought that up because I I didn't get to my announcements, so I have two announcements. I'll start with that one since you brought it up. Can I Mill just say one thing? Yes. Whoever did the Glasgow Turnpike did a beautiful job. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna May I recommend that you know that you think about hiring those people? Right? We've got somebody hired already. What? <laughs> that ship is sailed. That the contractor's hired and has been doing the project. The one on um, uh, the Mill Hill. The same guy that did it before. It's not finished. It's not finished yet. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good. Okay. Well, so let, let, hold on. Let me, let me make my announcement, and then you, you can come back. Okay. So they we we, we stopped the project. We got to a point where the, the base coats were all in, and with the film festival and a lot of, you know, it was a busy weekend, yeah. we wanted to hold off on the final coat. They'll be coming in. They had hoped to do it Monday or Tuesday. Monday it rained. Tuesday, as luck would have it, the uh, scales at the black, tamp, black top plants were being calibrated. Uh, so they're scheduled to come in on Thursday. Um, they they are going to come in. If you notice, there's numbers on the road mm -hmm. on the one side. They took elevation shots. And they're going to come in Thursday morning and um, 
trim, do some trim, trimming up or truing up. So they're gonna, you know, fill in some low spots. Then, depending on how long that takes, they'll either start Tuesday or excuse me Thursday afternoon, or otherwise Friday morning, and they're gonna put the final coat on. And the final coat comes on all the grates, the manhole covers will be flush. Oh, that's good news. Yes. So that this is just this was just to get us get us through and um, okay. so they will be coming back in. So with that, my big announcement is that we have been letting people go back to parking there. We're gonna start uh, Thursday morning, early Thursday morning, no more parking there. And I will remind people that the no parking signs are still there, they're still in force. Mm -hmm. We just haven't been issuing tickets. So um, please don't park there <coughs> Thursday and Friday. Those are the two days they're gonna be down there paving. And the less time they ch spend chasing cars, parked cars, <laughs> yeah, the quicker they'll get it done. That's great news. The last thing we want is for them to have to go into Monday. No, absolutely. So then early next week, they'll be doing the, the final uh, part of the project is to do the striping. They'll put the solid yellow lines in. Mm -hmm. They're actually also going to be painting, they'll do all the crosswalks where they were before. Mm -hmm. We didn't add any new ones. And um, they um, will be painting from below the lumber yard up to bread alone in the work zone. They're actually going to be um, painting the parking spots, defining them, which will make it a little easier, neater, and less congested. Also, we're adding parking spots from the pizzeria down past the... Uh, on the other side. On the same side. But the other side from the pizzeria. From the pizzeria. Okay, yes, from the pizzeria on, on the Shawu side down, on CVS side. So we're going to be picking up about 16 spots there. <laughs> yes. The other... Um, we get hit with all the construction at once, but next year should be an easy year, knock on wood. Uh, Tannery Brook, the county has started working on Tannery Brook. They slated two months for the project. They really feel that it's going to be three to four weeks. Um, there's no concrete work. They're not going down into the stream, so there's no excavation. They're going to be pulling the deck off and replacing it, replacing the steel and then the blacktop and the guardrails. <coughs> the county can't detour onto town roads. So that's why they don't have any signs indicating that people can go up Hillcrest. But all you locals, we all know it. So uh, Hillcrest is open. You can go up and around and come out on your street. Suck it up there, <laughs> Councilman. And no, just, just, can I just remind people, there is a stop sign at the end of Hillcrest in, in, uh, as you enter Deer. And it is at... And uh, I just bought a new car, and it's just... You know, that's why I'm in debt. If you know. look for a sign that says Hillcrest, you won't find one. Actually, oh, yes. you will? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Actually, there's, there's, there's one at each end. On, on the bottom end, there is. Up on top, Up on top, there is a sign. It's in the trees. Oh, is that where it is? It's in the trees. Yeah, you have to look for it, but it's there. The trees got trimmed. And I would also, you know, just remember that is a residential neighborhood. It's a tight road. So if you do go through there, just nobody else thinks it's residential. Respect your neighbors. Um, so that's it for. Um, Bill, could you just mention we about. Know, can we go back to this? Yeah, we can. About uh, the mud. Way late. About the mud hut and the parking on the opposite side oh, of the Oh, yes. I, I can't believe that's Woodstockers, actually. but I don't know who it is. Um, you know, one of the, the issues that's come about now with the, the, the new mud hub there where, uh, between the mobile station and the Cascade Pizza, people are actually parking on that side of the road, getting out of their car and walking down, leaving their cars <laughs> unattended. You will get ticketed. So um, I, I, I think that's probably more likely tourists. I can't imagine. But there's a parking spot that says loading and unloading only. Is that what you're saying? They're parking? No, no they're, they're on parking the on the road. Right oh. on the road. We had three um, of them the other day that uh -oh. jammed up traffic because they're parking on both sides right now. Right. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we did take a loop. Let's go back to the <laughs> stewardship. The, 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 uh, so I, I did have a comment on the form. Okay. Oh, and, and that would be, I know you've got date up here. but This is not my form. This is, this is from them. But you want a feedback. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I would think you'd want the date that the form is submitted, as well as the date of the project. I don't know if this date is the date you submit the form, or is it the date of the project? Because you have the project proposal title, 
So I think that you ought to have the date of the project as well as the date the form got submitted. And I think you'd also want to say who submitted the form. You kind of have that there submitted by, but it says group. But mm -hmm. anyway, so besides knowing who the contact person is, know who submitted the form and the date they submitted it. So, so that should be clarified what the date is. Which one of you gentlemen is the... Um, him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? No, it's me. Oh, it is you. <laughs> it is. So could you take Laura's um, comments back to the... Absolutely. You want to send them to me in an email? Because, frankly, I'm not going to remember that from here or there. Can I write it on the page and get it to yeah, you? Yeah, write it right on the page and, and not take that. To okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just still, also, this deals with events, right? Not projects, like uh, building something or... This is about events. I, wrote, I read it to mean anything. It could be a project, it could be a, an event, you know, something. Yeah, but a project necessarily wouldn't, a project would not go to the, to the insurance committee. And then that would go directly to... Right, that's yeah. 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 Confused, which is which. See, right. I didn't see insurance committee. I know you mentioned insurance committee, but maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, no, they, did, they missed the insurance committee. So, that's, so That was my... For, for an so event. Do you want me to add a note on here to give to Lauren? No, because the, the events are going to come to the insurance committee. Oh, okay. We're going to have, the insurance okay. committee will have that in hand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bill, so who has the final, so if someone has a, fills out the Como stewardship yeah, form, does it still go to safety and insurance, or does it just, the Como stewardship group approves it and that's it? No, no, they're, no they're, 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 they're an advisory board. So the stewardship. Yes, okay. they, they would only advise the town board. You are the decision makers. Yeah. So, I'll you know, if, it, if, if it's a, a events that are commonplace that have happened already, mm -hmm. and the board is, you know, in, in past years mm -hmm. given, for instance, the Peach, Peace March, they, they mm -hmm. hold an event, or the, the, uh, the, the Women's March, right. the, that was, uh, typical events like that are just handled by the Insurance and the Safety runner, Committee. Yeah. The bike people that came up yeah, here. Yeah, there was a bike race. Where, where it would be something different, new, and unique, that's where we would kick it to the town board so that we would all make the decision. Is this a use that we want to see happen on the, on the property? So, okay, I just marked that up so you can hand it to Lauren. I will take it to them. Yeah. They meet the first Monday of every month. So, so Bill, speaking of announcements, I had a quick question, and that is, I know when we when we signed vouchers today, oh. we, we signed uh, electric vehicle uh, related things. Yes. And how are we doing with uh, the installation? Done. That's Up and what, running. There, there you go. That, yes. So that's an announcement. So we have um, two the double charging stations, one located on the back wall of the um, public bathrooms at Ten Rock City Road. The other double station is located up at the Mescal Hornbeck Community Center on the uh, side of the building facing away from town. Um, so they're up and running, they're free to use. And uh, charging stations for electric cars. Electric cars? We're getting green, we're getting greener. We're already green, we're yes. getting greener. Mm -hmm. How long will it take to charge small car? I don't know. Are they two twenties? Whatever, they're whatever uh, is needed. They're, they're whatever is needed. I mean, they're they're like you know, electric vehicle charging stations. Two. Yeah, they are. There's yeah. a double. It's a double forty. Yeah, they are two twenty. Yes. Yeah. But I, I still. I think it depends upon how much charge the car needs is yeah. going to determine the time it's going to take okay. to charge and it. I don't know what a typical charge is for. A and different model cars. Totally take empty. That have different batteries take different times to charge. Oh yeah. What's it, anybody have an idea what a typical is? A couple hours I to charge? Know. I don't know. I think some of them will charge. Depends how low it is. About four hours. I have a Chevy Bolt outside. Uh huh. And I have a 221 at my house. Right. And it takes about 15 minutes to charge. Right. And it takes, I just, I just plug it in over now. I'm not sure how, how long it is. takes. You, you never get all the way down to the, till when it's empty, so. Well, I, I got, got close. pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Say four hours, four hours a, a, a Well, hopefully not. Help you a lot. <laughs> hopefully not. Too many people will keep it there for four hours. I mean, you won't get too many people that'll be able to charge unless we keep adding charging stations, which well, I'm sure we will. I'm going to New York and back on, on my charge. Right. So. I mean, is there any rule or reg with that? 
Brit, uh, Bill, as far as somebody <coughs> parking talking, their car I'm there? there. A resolution. Um, you know what I'm saying? If, if I wanted to be in town, I wanted to charge my car, I pull up to the charging station, plug in, and I'm there for eight hours. I you mean, know, technically, we don't have a law against it. I, I hope that people would people be respectful. respect it. Um, we may have to institute that into the parking regs. So maybe schedule time. People, you know, have the scheduling time. So you, you actually can go online. That they they have a site where you can go online and schedule for that. Now I don't know how you enforce it. Yeah. How do you get somebody off the charger? That's what I mean. I don't know how you get somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you know when they came? Right when they arrived. Um, just let me, I'm working on one quick resolution. So I want to schedule a public hearing for the comp plan. <clears throat> the next week we talked about town offices. The comprehensive plan. For next week? Yes, Wednesday. It's up to 20. At night? Yes. This is available on Wednesday at 7. And then we're doing the following Thursday for the pub public hearing for the town hall? Why, isn't that two Thursdays away? Because the twenty. We're talking, no, it's two Thursdays. Oh, I'm sorry. Which? which Twenty-fourth. Yes. Be resolved to schedule a public hearing for the draft Woodstock comprehensive plan for October twenty-fourth at seven p.m. at the town offices. It further resolves to direct the town clerk to advertise in the local paper. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Totally forgot that resolution. Glad you guys talked. Okay, so we don't need to do anything with that. We'll take that back to them. We'll take that back to them. Any more comments, questions, yes, announcements from the town board? Not at the moment. No. no. Good. Oh, this council doesn't have anything to do with what's going on with the library, does it? No, no we do not. Is, no. Okay. Independent body. Everybody knows about that, right? Okay, hold on. This so is a public discussion. The town right. board meeting. Will there be time to get the notice in the paper about the comprehensive planning uh, uh, meeting on the comprehensive plan? It'll go in. It'll go in Thursday. Okay. Now you said that will be yeah. in town offices. 7 Here. p.m. October twenty-fourth. Here. Would be large enough. This venue. I don't know if anybody that's even you, come you out know, from the comp plan. When we had the comp plan, we didn't get this many people when we presented it, so. Oh, yeah. no, I haven't heard anything well, well, adverse. I hope we have a big crowd. Yeah, yeah. If we have to, we'll move it down. Well, Bill, Bill I, will, I will say that when there have been the community meetings, we've had them in the community center, and it's been mm -hmm. pretty full. Okay. So we've had community meetings. We, that's been the case. We did have the presentation, and again, there wasn't this big a crowd. So if we have to, we can move and to the And that was in the community center. center. And it didn't fill the, the room. But it might have overflowed. We'll, this we'll move if we have to. When, when will we know? And that night? We'll know, Laura. <laughs> where will I find you? Yeah, I'll be right here. Text me. Yes, if you're not but, here, text me and tell me where you Depends are. Depends on how well oh, we are. Oh, you better come on time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any, uh, any other questions, comments from the board? Public? Bill, if you're going to go into. Just chatting about this. Do you mind just taking the notes? I'm going to tool. No, uh, absolutely. No, business no. is done. No, business is done. Okay, thank you. I promise you. Well, if we do any more business, I'll let you know. Okay. Sam. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I missed the public be heard. I came for that. I enjoyed the meeting. Good meeting. A lot of good things done. Um, I'm here about the library issue, how it relates to the town board. Um, I mean, with 85 or more percent of this community wanting to see a better library, it is really a tragedy that we're in this um, rather heated debate. Absolutely. I think it's, uh, well, my point of view is, and I'm not with many others, is that it's a question of leadership. Um, uh, the one option about voting yes uh, to keep the library uh, open but dissolve the district that encourages a municipal option. Now, um, we want to commend the town board for all of the successful building projects that it's completed uh, on time, within the budget, and not just that, but in a peaceful and fiscally um, 
satisfying way for this community. Uh, so in the course of this debate, um, I think it's inappropriate to somehow think that the town couldn't do the job. If there is a yes vote on this resolution, the town can do the job. Yes. I mean, the problem with the, the library is that um, it's a building issue. It's a facility issue. And many of us, I would say most people in this community, are very comfortable with the services and the programs and all those good things uh, that we all love about the library. Uh, the, the problem is this building issue. And so I would encourage, uh, because I believe there should be a yes vote, to keep the library, keep the books, the staff, the services, the doors open, okay, uh, but dissolve the district. Why dissolve the district? Well, here we are, 30 years after I voted and many other people voted to have a district, to hopefully have enough money to improve the building. And we've had a series of, uh, I think, missteps, um, irrational exuberance. Um, having so many people in this town wanting a better library, it is really a shame that we haven't been able to find common ground and end up with something that the whole community could support. Thank you, uh, sir. I came out here to, oh. again, thank you. Um, and, you know, Jeremy Wilbur uh, was a part of the, the building in this community, and you. Uh, and um, in the course of this scuffle, okay, I caution people not to malign good people who have an incredibly great track record while we're bickering over whether the library uh, board should be, um, the district should be dissolved or not. I'm one of those who thinks that let the town fix the building and then give it back to the library board so they can continue without having this, this pail or this onus of the building. Give it to some uh, uh, organization who can. Now, um, the, uh, oh, uh, very important. Let me give you 10 more seconds, Sam. Okay. Oh, very important note that okay. someone gave me, and I wanted to make sure it was okay. said. Um, there's a question about the transition from a, the district library to a municipal library, and whether there'd be a loss of services or a, uh, a breakdown in the transition. If you look at Salem, uh, New York, up near Glens Falls, it was a little bit different. They had a village that was uh, dissolving into the town. And because the library was coupled with the village, they had to dissolve the library district. But then they had to recharter it. They all saw it coming. They all sat down, did all the hard work, and without a lapse or a break in service, they transitioned from one to the other. Um, and I know people are saying that uh, the horrible things are going to happen. I think it's a shame. Let's just treat, let's try and discuss this with facts and be uh, civil to one another. After this is all said and done, we're all still going to be neighbors, and Amen. I think we have to take that approach as we go through the battle. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, you know, I'm just going to take one minute to address something that I've seen on Facebook, and this is in no way an endorsement to vote yes or no, but just to correct some information. Um, I did see a, a thread on Facebook where folks were talking about that the town board, the town budget, does not uh, take into effect the library this year. There was a quote in the Woodstock Times, and what, what it was my quote, and what I was saying was I, I was giving the increase for the year for the budget, and I said it was for the general fund and the highway fund, which are total town budgets, and that increase did not reflect the library budget of the fire district. And, you know, so people were instantly panicked that the library is not going to have any money. The library budget for 2019 passed, the voters passed it, and that money will be collected and remitted to the library in January or February. So that will be there. They will have an operating capital for next year. It's not just going to collapse the minute there's a vote. The other thing is that I've made a promise, and I, you know, I, I try to be careful not to make too many promises because things change. But the one thing I did promise uh, on Facebook, I mentioned this, and I'll, I'll say it here in public on television, is that were the vote to pass were, uh, with a yes vote and were the library to have to dissolve 
and were the library board uh, wanting to give it over to the town, I guarantee, I make a promise to the people of Woodstock that I would take their budget, their present budget, and put it into the budget next year, in 2020. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to pass. There are three, it takes three people to pass a budget. There are other council. But the supervisor develops the budget. So I promise the voters it will be there. And I have to say, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I've got no indication from any council that they would want to do anything less. Um, so our library is not going away. No matter what happens, we're going to have a library next year. We're going to have a library in two, 2020. Oh, that's good news. Um, and I will just end with one more quick story, because people, that, when I say that, then they'll say, well, you, you don't know what's going to happen the year after, the year after, the year after. We don't know what's going to happen. But I remember sitting in, in this room one time when a supervisor suggested that we do away with dispatch. Town was in a budget crunch, and it was a, a way to save about $200,000. The public came out. The room was absolutely packed. And everybody said, too important a service. We hear you loud and clear. And the, budget, the uh, dispatch was left in the budget. So, yes, if, if the town board takes it over, you don't get a direct vote, but you vote for us. And you vote for three of us every two years. Uh, so there's an opportunity to change the board. So um, I know sometimes it doesn't feel like we listen, but I really do think we try to, to pay attention. And, and you know, part of maybe that feeling of not listening is this, if there are 10 people in here telling us to do something, but there's 200 people out there telling us to do the, dip, the opposite thing, you know, we're still listening and we're listening to the majority. So with that long-winded speech, I'm done. You guys well, 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 as library yeah. liaison, I wanted to say a yeah. couple of things. Okay. So, so a couple of things, and Sam can correct me if I'm wrong, or, or Bill, or anybody that, that knows better than I do, but in, in the event that there were a yes vote, and in the event that the library district dissolved, there, we, we, we expect the town would pick it up, but it's not a guarantee because it's not our goal. Because it's there's, there's just different, just different options of where the library could go, who could own it. Which, so, which is a decision we don't make. Which is a decision the we don't library, make. A library, the library makes. Well, well, there you go. Okay, so, 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 my, so my point, so, so the first. The decision as to where the library goes. So who who, who will own the. Um, association. A, uh, association or a school district yeah. or yeah right. so, 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 okay, okay, hold on. okay so, so anyway yeah, my turn still so 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 the belief is that they would decide the town would pick it up but it's not a guarantee with the vote and, and the other thing I want to say is I asked Ashley Dittis who is the, one of the commissioners of elections you know do you have the resolution yet can I see it and she says our ballots not ready yet till next week so I would have liked to have seen the resolution we're going to vote on and I don't have the exact words yet but what I do want to say is in the event that the library district gets dissolved, there's different choices of who could own the library assets. One choice is the town. We expect it would come to us, but we don't control where it goes. The other point I do want to make is people who vote yes should be really, really sure that you really, really do not want a library district because I have been told by Kevin Cahill's office that this state is no longer approving library districts being created. If our library district gets dissolved, we should not expect to turn around and reinstate it after the building's fixed. Because right now, and things change all the time, of course, all over the place, but Kevin Cahill's office has told me that at this point in time, that New York State is not approving new library districts. So if you vote yes to dissolve it, be really, really sure that's really, really what you want because it's not a reversible decision in the short term, at least, until laws change and you know, things change. The, the, the move by the present governor is to consolidate. They want to see villages consolidate into towns. They want to see multiple taxing districts rolled into one taxing district. So mm -hmm. that's what Laura's referring to. Uh, Laura, the the, the oh. library district board is pushing to have this 10, 12, 20 million dollar project that will gentrify Woodstock because it will force mm -hmm. many people out. You know, I, I don't want to get into what they're trying to do only because th this is really, a, I, I wanted to clear facts up about 
what could potentially happen. But, they, but they, you, you, they've already wasted three hundred thousand dollars on on having these these people come right. these these companies come in. Oh, it should look like this and should look like that. Mm -hmm. They're all big industrial buildings. I don't want that. Okay. Can I just ask more? Oh, yes. one, one quick question, and then I'm going to yes, yes. about the Hegel. Okay, yes. Okay. Is he saying that there is a resolution or a policy at the state level not to approve, or is it just that they haven't been brought forward? Uh, uh, people have brought forward requests, and they're sitting in limbo because nobody wants to approve the request, is what I've heard from Kevin Cahill's office. This so is not just with libraries. It's with, with all new districts okay. across the board. There's Again, there's this push from the governor to consolidate. Um, you know, he would look at Woodstock and say there are seven or eight layers of government. The general fund, the highway fund, the, the three sewer districts, the two sewer districts and the water district is, is five. Really, it's, it's one town board that oversees it all. But in his eyes, he's calling that five governments. You know, then we have the, high, the, uh, the fire department, library. we've got the library, and we've got lighting districts. Again, the lighting districts are all controlled by us, but he views those as multiple layers of government. And there's just a desire to eliminate. Got Steve, last question. Uh, I want to change the subject. Okay. Back to 5G. And I want to ask, what's the very next thing that we can do uh, to go forward on uh, protecting the staff from 5G? Talk to me in a week. We're, we're, I've been working with the Supervisors Association on this, and I've got some phone calls out to see how we can... What's the best avenue to protect ourselves? Steve, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I, I read about the SEC and what they're trying to do. What stage are they at? What level? They, they passed the rule. They did order. pass they it. They made it in order. Mm -hmm. And now uh, states and cities and hundreds of cities yeah. and towns are uh, preparing to file lawsuits. One has filed a lawsuit. Portland, Oregon has filed a lawsuit. And the mayor's conference also the Governor's uh, Association, and also the utilities, I'm not utilities, the uh, counties, the National Council. Uh, every, everybody's in the All the room. municipal organizations are up in arms and want to stop it. So yeah, I agree. I'm just saying I didn't know if they passed it yet. They passed okay. it. They passed September 26th. Yep. So, but by the way, it passed three to four, and uh, the three that voted for it were male Republicans. Of course. No offense, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> the, and, and the uh, one who was against it was a Democratic female. And she was against it. And she said the FCC is overstepping their authority. They're, they're only there to regulate. They're not there to force something on you. And then, by the way, they've not only approved it, but they're financing it. They're granting the, the, the trillion dollar telecom industry $2 billion to push this thing through. Mm -hmm. So we need to really get, this is serious stuff. Uh, oh. Professor Martin Paul, who was on my show, is one of the leading experts in the world. He found the biological mechanism of harm that nobody else has found. And he found the mechanism, and nobody's challenged it. And he says, if we get 5G, at the, at the way everything's going right now with 4G, 5G is an addition to 4G. It's not if you're going to replace 4G, it's 4G plus 5G, and with 5G, he says in five years' time, uh, he believes every uh, place that has it in their developed society, the society will go sterile. That's how bad, this is the seriousness of this situation. Okay. Okay, hold, hold, hold on. We're, we're going to adjourn the meeting now, and you guys can continue. I would like to say one thing about the library. Okay, go right ahead. I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. I go back. Hey, hey, hey. I go back far enough in this town to remember when the big battle was over consolidating the schools. You might remember that. Too. And it got nasty, but I've never seen anything get this bad. Maybe social media is a big part of it. But I had friends at the library cuss me out in a public restaurant in front of my wife and my oh. friends because oh, no. I disagree with them. I mean, this is out of control. What about 5G? No, no. the library. The library. The library. The library. So I, I hope that when this is over and the dust settles that everybody can go back to being Woodstockers.
I I hope we can. I hope we do. Richard, hold on. Richard, I was there that night. Not all your friends. Not everybody was your friend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my, my my sentiments are very similar to Mr. Rose's. I was on Facebook the other night and. I've been trying to avoid it, but I said, let me just see what the pulse is, what the sense is, and I had to stop. I just had to stop reading this stuff. And I realized there's passion on both sides, and there are good people on both sides, and there are well-meaning people on both sides, but some of the stuff is just getting out of hand. There's an important election coming up, folks. Uh, we shouldn't lose sight of that fact, for one, locally and nationally. And number two, we all got to live here after November 6th. Uh, we've been through our battles before. The town historian, I can cite you, you know, a dozen times when, it's, when it's, we've been kind of torn apart and it's never been good. Uh, I hope uh, if you need answers, you can find the people who give you the straight answers on either side uh, and, and vote as you think you should vote. Uh, but let's remember we're a community, we're neighbors, and we've got to get through this thing. Amen. I just want to add to that quickly that many of the people on both sides of uh, this issue are really looking for national change and saying we need you know leadership and we need people to be you know so here's the opportunity for us to demonstrate that at this level and to model that and model what we want to see at the national Excellent. level so it's very easy to get really up in arms about national things and then when we're here at home that we can't treat each other in a in a respectful manner. So I think that we should really take that on if we are looking at Washington, D.C. and looking for change there, that, in, uh, that we need to start modeling that. And it's very easy for us to get swept up in all the anger for valid reasons, but that here's our chance at the local level to scream and cry, you know, and that we should just really be mindful of that and really be aware of it, not only with each other, but on social media. and. Um, if you want to cuss Lauren Rose, do it privately. <laughs> yes. No, he can do it publicly. Do it privately. Don't do it publicly. And Bill, I have 45 signatures regarding the five. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted to, to weigh on that. <laughs> we have to comment, Lauren. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, two comments. Number one, I do want to agree with Bill because he said he hasn't pulled the board yet. But I do want to agree with Bill. In the event the town picks up the library, I clearly also would support we maintain the budget. So. So he's got two of us, and probably the whole board feels the same way. But I just want to make sure that Bill knows he's not the only one standing alone. On yeah, you know, I'm certainly with Bill on that. If we do assume the library, we keep the budget. We run the library as best we can. If we pick up the library, uh, the other thing is I, I want to agree with what my peers on the board have said about getting along. And the thing about the library, I think, to remember is people are very divided on how we think we ought to get to the right spot. But I think we all want a good library, so I'm hoping that we can remember what we have in common of what we want. We all want what's best for the town. We all want a good library. And to not get too, not get too caught up in the division of how we get there. And I certainly agree, no matter how your neighbor votes, we're all one community. Uh, and let's make sure, at least after November 6th, we're, we're acting that way. Excellent. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks. Thank you.